Virginia Galvin Piper led a dedicated life. The founder of the Virginia G. Piper Charitable Trust demonstrated not only a dedication to family during her 87 years of life, but also to Midwestern values, to spiritual principles, and ultimately, to humanity. Her sense of caring for others and a loving sense of humankind to be selfless in our relationships with others, leaving um, the world in a little better place than all of us came into it was probably one of the finest things I remember about her character. Born in 1911 in Glen Ellen, Illinois, Virginia Critchfield was the daughter of a civil engineer and a music teacher. Despite coming of age during the Great Depression, Virginia and her sister Carol grew up with a love of music and a family life that left them with many treasured memories. The spirit of family and the spirit of a loving, caring relationship uh, to each other uh, was really what Virginia was all about. Virginia also had a love for the written word. She went out of her way to make sure she chose just the right word for the occasion, typing out countless cards and letters over the years on her manual royal typewriter that became a symbol of her sincerity, warmth, and grace. Her letters are remarkable, and people will tell you that once they received a letter from Virginia Piper, they just couldn't throw it away. She uh, had a great sense of humor, uh, bright, articulate, but I think for me, what I enjoyed about her, she was a great wordsmith. I, I love wordsmiths who pick the right words for the right occasions. After graduating from Oak Park High School in 1929, Virginia took a job as a receptionist in a doctor's office in downtown Chicago, living through the Depression at home during her 20s and into her 30s. In 1945, at the age of 33, she married Paul Galvin. This, she would say in her later years, was the beginning of her real life. Virginia's 14-year marriage to Galvin, a widower and successful entrepreneur who founded Motorola, set the stage for her role as a philanthropist. Her great love and respect and admiration for Paul Galvin gave her life that focus. His strong Catholic faith influenced her to convert and become a devoted Catholic. A steward of Paul Galvin's trust after his death in 1959, she took her responsibility as a philanthropist seriously, approaching causes with her mind as well as her heart. Virginia didn't just write checks, and it's not that just writing checks is not a good thing, but she really probed. She wanted to understand the issues that a nonprofit was dealing with, she believed this money was really hers only to steward, that she was a steward for Paul Galvin, her first husband, and for God. Virginia eventually married again, this time to Motorola executive Ken Piper in 1969. Their union was followed by the couple's move from the Chicago area to Arizona in 1972 and his untimely death in 1975. After his death, she continued to work tirelessly as a generous donor from their Paradise Valley home, where she earned the name Living Room Philanthropist. She had a wonderful, wonderful office in the back of her home, but nobody ever got to go into the office. She used her living room as a gracious, lovely place to visit with people. And it did put people at ease, rather than have a desk between her and uh, a potential grantee. Virginia died in 1999, leaving the responsibility to build the Piper Trust to her hand-picked trustees. Their goal was to oversee a fund of $600 million to support nonprofits in Maricopa County. Her legacy has a continuing impact on nonprofit organizations in areas of arts and culture, children, education, health care and medical research, older adults, and religious organizations. As Piper Trust looks to the future, trustees and staff continue to honor Virginia's spirit, the spirit of a servant leader whose love for people drove her dedication to help those in the community she loved. 
at the end of the day, how we do our work, um, how we work with nonprofits, how we see this as a privilege, is exactly what Virginia Piper did. So would Virginia be proud of this? That's the question we always ask. Thank you.